Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Costa if you are new here. So today's video, I just wanted to give an update on my nursing school career. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. So this past fall semester, I was in Peds OB as well as in community health. So for Peds and OB, um, our clinical was split up um, from being on a pediatric unit to being on a postpartum unit. So for my for the first part, I was in a pediatric neurology floor, I believe, at one hospital um, during the nighttime. So it was three to eleven, I want to say or three to 10, I can't remember. And then um, when that switched to OB, I was on a, I was on a postpartum floor at a different hospital in the morning. So it was like um, seven to one or seven to two or something like that. So for the pediatric floor, I did like it. I feel like, you know, with COVID and everything, I didn't get as much experience as I have as much as I would have wanted to um I did have I think I only had like one I think I only had like one patient during that time because I think we had four or five clinicals how did that work oh no I remember okay I was getting confused I had one baby who was there for hydrocephalus and then I had another baby that was there for um, a head fracture which um, when you're really young and can't move uh, well a head fracture is um, possibly a sign of some type of abuse at home not always but uh, it was a little sus suspicious on how um, that child got a head fracture, but the parents were cleared and yeah, so while having those um, kids on the pediatric unit, I feel like I didn't do too much because the parents were normally there um, one at a time because those are the COVID precautions is only one parent could be there um, at a time. I think really the only thing I did was do like the like head to toe assessments, um, way diapers, um, maybe gave like a medication or two, but most of the time, uh, infants are given, um, sucrose for discomfort. So other than that, I did get to see someone place, I think it was an ECG leads. Uh, I'm definitely going to need help on that when the day comes that I get to do that again, but that's something that I saw on that unit. And most of the time we were working on our care plan because well, this is what I liked about that teacher, um, about that clinical instructor I mean, is that all the documentation or the care plan that we had to do that had to be done um, before we left because in a normal setting, you know, you don't get to go home and document. It's all done there. So, I mean, I like the pediatric part of it I think I could definitely did more um, but the whole care plan doing that um, before leaving uh, definitely held up a lot of time so I can definitely see how nurses uh, spend a majority of their time documenting and then we moved to a different hospital for a postpartum unit and a labor and delivery unit which was my favorite part of this semester. So on the postpartum unit, uh, you just do like the uh, bubble he assessment on the mother and you do the head to toe assessment on the newborn baby. But if I don't go into something that's labor and delivery, I could definitely see myself in a postpartum unit. And the documenting part was pretty similar to what we did in the pediatric floor, except we did the actual documentation on the computer instead of on paper like we did at the pe pediatric. We didn't really do much of the uh, computer documentations that nurses usually do. 
Um, but anytime that we did something, we documented and had to have our documentation completed by the end of a clinical. So during this time at that hospital, I did get to go on the labor and delivery unit and I was actually really lucky to go on the day that I did. Um, so I got to see a vaginal birth and a cesarean in the same day and you're lucky if you get one of those, especially a vaginal delivery. Um, so as much as this was exciting, I had a bit of a uh, situation happen, you know, not, not anything bad, but okay. I've gotten lightheaded before, twice before, um, during my clinicals. One was at a geriatric unit and it was really hot in the room, uh, in the residence room and we were turning her and just the tension on my back and it being hot, I got dizzy. Uh, the second time was at the ICU when a guy had a false passage in uh, when he was trying to get um, the Foley catheter in and that was a whole situation with the man yelling. Uh, I started getting hot, music was playing in the background, blood was coming out. It was not a good sight for me. I got lightheaded during that. I had to leave the room and again, this time, which this is the worst for me because labor and delivery is what I aim to do eventually after doing like a med surge for or just general uh, medicine. I wanted to go into a specialty of labor and delivery. So it wasn't necessarily the birth, I think. That made me lightheaded at all. It was just the um, the mix of all my senses being like overridden, if that's the right word to use. Um, I was starting to get hot. My back was a little tense because I was holding um, the woman's leg to help her push. I was also visually Alexa, rude. Go away. Turn off Alexa. Anyways, what was I saying? So I was also visually, you know, looking at what happened. I saw the whole thing, the whole birth. Uh, there was some meconium in the um, amniotic fluid. Um, but I mean, that type of thing doesn't really bother me. Um, so I don't know if I get like overly stimulated or something like that. Or, And I'm pretty sure I ate breakfast that day. Like, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I guess I need to eat more, but I'm pretty sure I had like Dunkin' Donuts or something. Um, whatever. I don't remember. Anyways, I got super lightheaded as soon as I felt, um, as soon as I was able to, um, when she was done delivering, I made sure to step back from everybody else and I just had to hold on to the counter there. Cause I, yeah, I got lightheaded and I was just, I was, honestly, I was super upset with myself <clears throat> that day just because like this is something that I'm gonna have to deal with later is this gonna happen every time am I gonna get used to it should I change my like goal specialty like and my long-term goal is to be a certified nurse midwife so for there to be a change in what I end up doing as a regular registered nurse um, that's gonna change like my whole long-term goal. So I'm still in the process of figuring it out. Um, I think I'll still try for the labor and delivery and uh, just see if I can, I guess, handle it, you know? And then if I can't, it is what it is. I'll just change my long-term goal into something else. There's other things. Um, I could be interested in doing. <laughs> no, honestly, I think I would probably go into like the, um, I would do like the postpartum nursing. Now for long term, I don't know exactly what I would do for that, but I will figure it out. It's all gonna come together. <laughs> and last thing about pediatrics and obstetrics. This was the hardest class I have had 
in nursing school okay um i was expecting because you know i'm really interested in the content that i'm gonna you know it's gonna be easy or it's gonna be you know more enjoyable than uh all the other classes no that was not the case this i felt like i never had a moment to breathe with Pete Zenobi, um, yeah, I honestly thought I was going to fail the class and I just had to use every resource possible uh, to not um, fail the class. So at first I was doing um, practice questions, but uh, our teachers told us to don't worry about that. So I just started focusing mainly on um, the PowerPoint. Uh, what I always do every semester is I do the PowerPoints and I read what they tell us to read. I would not, at this point in nursing school, going into my last semester, honestly, focus on the PowerPoints that they give you. And if you need more explanation on something, then read it in the book. But a lot of the stuff that's in the book, you might not even need to cover um, because it's not on the PowerPoint, you're not going to be tested on it. So I would definitely focus a lot more on the PowerPoints uh, and your lectures than um, the book itself. So lastly, I had Community Health and Community Health was fine. I don't think it's necessarily something I want to do like long term, but it's definitely an option. Uh, so Community Health, you pretty much... Um, our nurse that goes to people's houses um so for those who had like a knee replacement or um older people that had like a uti and they have like a fully catheter um you would go to their house and do a head to assessment as you would in the hospital and it actually seems to me not not exactly easier but easier to handle because you're not doing a whole bunch of things at once you're focusing on this patient for an hour or an hour and a half of your time but you also have to fit everything that you need to do into that time so i can see how it can be um, complicated to um, have those time management skills so i would pretty much shadow a nurse um once a week and we would go to about two or three patients per day, depending on what her workload was um, that day. And you really get to see like their living situation. You know, you're going into their house. Like not everybody's home is really clean. You see people that are living a way that you wouldn't nece necessarily um, <laughs> like to be living. Um, you know, we've gone into some houses where um, it just really smells like animal piss and they honestly they probably can't tell they probably get used to that smell you may go into someone's house who has like a dog um, who just won't leave you alone or maybe you're allergic to cats and they have a cat um, or, or you may have a patient who is in a really nice house like the um, different type of people that you see and you meet um, it's definitely pretty diverse. Now comparing um, OB peds with community health, uh, community for me was um, I would say a lot easier. So me being there with the nurse, um, the main things I would do was I would go ahead and do like a set of vital signs and if she wasn't in the room I would try my best to make talk with the patients and kind of assess things but also just you know uh, get to know them i'm very awkward in these situations and yeah it definitely made me really nervous oh but with community health uh this past semester i did make the news so my nursing group we actually for a day we um did flu shots at a community center and we made the news and like I had a very, I had a decent part. I didn't say anything in the news, but I mean, they filmed me quite frequently and I was like, oh, got my 10 seconds of fame. So that was fun. I actually quite enjoyed that. And actually, um, and I do actually have the chance to 
um, give COVID vaccines to people. Um, they've been doing that through my school, um, honestly, for like the past month, but I was in Texas and now I'm home. I'm technically, I'm still quarantined for a little bit. So once I'm done quarantined, um, I'll reach out to my, uh, the head of nursing and see if I can get in on giving the COVID vaccine because I think that's pretty freaking cool. And eventually I need to get my COVID vaccine because I qualify for apparently the first phase. And so as soon as I can get that, the happier I will be. And yeah, that's it for this past semester. Now this going into my last semester of nursing school, I honestly can't believe it. <laughs> so I am going into my practicum, um, which I don't know where and what unit I'm on yet and school starts in about less than 10 days I think so yeah we still haven't officially heard a word on where I'll be but as soon as I find out and get some experience in that I will make another video video update so I'm excited I graduate in five months like almost exactly like four no Oh my god oh my god like exactly like four months that is insane okay i will see you guys in my next video thank you guys so much for watching bye